Power has always been a part of human history, and people's constant search for it often leads them to try new things, from speech manipulation to complex strategies. Things like theater, stoicism, Machiavellianism, social skills, and seduction are all part of this very large field, and they are all connected by the desire for absolute power. Have you ever wished you had power but didn't know how to get it? That's where an interesting book that claims to reveal the keys to dominance comes in. There are strong feelings about the book 48 Laws of Power, which is about strategy and power. Some people don't believe in it, while others see it as a way to get ahead. You better get ready for this video to go deep into the universe. When taking in new information and ideas, it's important to keep an open mind before making any decisions. The discussions in this book have immeasurable value because they can be used to change your life in real ways. The key to overcoming challenges and achieving your objectives may lie in comprehending and using the lessons in 48 Laws of Power. This is an invitation to think about ideas that can change your future. By getting these skills, you put yourself in a position to get past problems that might get in the way of your success. But the promise is that you will gain more power, knowledge and strength. Now, let's dive into 48 Laws of Power, which is a universe full of tricks, plans and lessons that can change your life. As you go on this journey, you will learn things that will change you and give you the power you've always wanted. Law 1. Don't shine. This law says that if you want to do well and move up in your social or professional circle, you need to make the people above you feel good about their jobs. The main idea here is to be moderate in showing off your skills and abilities so as not to make your boss feel threatened or insecure. This law says that you can make your bosses feel comfortable with their position of power by using a set of well-thought-out strategies. How to show off your skills in a subtle way is the first law. It's important to show that you're competent, but never so much that you overshadow your boss. The goal is to make them feel better and more capable because you were there and helped. When you're presenting your ideas, this is especially important. You should say them in a way that makes it look like they came from or were inspired by your boss's thoughts. Understanding how power works and making the right guess about how strong your boss is is another important part of this law. Keeping a low profile and working on improving the master's light is the best thing to do if your boss is very strong and sure of his or her position. If your boss is weak or falling like a shooting star, on the other hand, the law says you should do something different. There's no reason to be afraid of standing out more in this case, but it's important to carefully look at the situation so that you don't come across as someone who takes advantage of someone else's weakness. The law also talks about the power of quiet compliments. If you flatter your boss in a subtle but effective way, they will see you as a valuable ally instead of a threat, which will help your position. This strategy works best when used correctly because it builds trust and dependence so the superior feels safe and at ease with you around. Last but not least, Law 1 tells you not to take your position for granted. Always try to get better at what you do and learn more about it, and be ready to ask your boss for help and advice. This not only strengthens your position as a trainee, but it also shows your boss that you are loyal and respect the hierarchy. Law 2. Don't trust your friends, but value your enemies. In a strange way, friends who are close and well-known can become the biggest threats. Because they are close and know our weaknesses well, along with the chance of envy and discontent, they can be sources of betrayal. On the other hand, people trust their enemies more. This seems to go against the law, but the reasoning is clear. Once an enemy is defeated or joined, they have more to prove. He wants to show loyalty to get his new job and make up for the times he was mean to others in the past. Also, turning an enemy into an ally is a strong sign of skill and influence. 
But the law doesn't say that you should be completely mean to your friends. Instead, it urges people to be careful and learn more about how people interact with each other. It serves as a reminder of the risks of being too comfortable and sure of yourself in relationships that seem safe. There are times when the law is useful in professional settings. Power struggles and office politics often call for a steady hand and a smart mind, putting skill and efficiency ahead of blind loyalty and emotional ties. It is often a safer way to maintain power and achieve success. But this law is not always true. Sometimes close friends can't be replaced. This is especially true when complete trust and unwavering loyalty are needed. In these situations, you might have to do things that are private or that require a lot of personal loyalty. A reminder of how complicated relationships between people can be, especially when it comes to power. It teaches us to be careful, to think about what other people are trying to do and to see the value in all of our relationships even the ones that aren't friendly. We can be smarter and more effective in the complicated world of power and influence if we can skillfully balance these forces. Law 3. Keep your plans secret. According to the law of power, you should keep people guessing about your plans, which is a smart move. Never say why you're doing what you're doing. People won't be able to get ready to defend you if you keep them in the dark. By leading them down false paths and making things confusing, you can keep them from seeing your true intentions until it's too late. Accept and back ideas or causes that go against how you feel, as long as they help you reach your goals. Sincerity and honesty are often mixed up because people tend to believe what they see. People will believe what you say more if you seem to believe it yourself. Keep your face neutral. If you look calm and believable, you can plan all kinds of tricks without getting caught. People often want to believe that good deeds are real because it makes them feel better. Most of the time, they don't realize how misleading these actions can be. This law is like a fox that's dressed as a sheep. People think that sheep are safe, but the fox can sneak into the coop with the sheepskin. Some things don't follow this rule, though. If you are known for being dishonest, no amount of smokescreen or fake sincerity can hide what you really want to do. In that case, the best thing to do is to own up to what you did and act like you're sorry. It's possible for people to admire how sincere you seem, which lets you keep lying in a more subtle way. This power law teaches the art of simulation and subtle manipulation. You can get what you want without anyone directly stopping you if you hide your true intentions and trick people with fake looks and actions. However, this method needs skill, care, and sometimes the ability to change strategies when needed. Law 4. Don't talk more than you need to. A basic lesson from the law of power is to speak less than you need to. When you want to make an impression with words, less is more. The more you talk, the less normal you seem, and the less in charge you seem to have of anything. If you make your statements vague, broad and mysterious, even simple ones can sound new and important. There's a way for powerful people to impress and scare you through silence. When you talk too much, you're more likely to make mistakes. By talking less, you get other people to tell you more about themselves. By carefully interpreting what they say, you stay in charge and look more unique and rare. You also lower the chance of saying something stupid or harmful, which makes it harder for people to trick you. The Oracle of Delphi is a good example of this law. The priestess's mysterious and simple words were seen as important and had power over life and death. There are some exceptions to this rule, though. Silence can sometimes make people feel unsafe or suspicious, especially superiors. In some situations, comments that aren't clear can be taken the wrong way. Some people think it's smarter to act like a fool and look less smart than they really are. This way, no one will think they have a secret plan or agenda. 
The law of power basically says that what you don't say is often more powerful than what you do say, and that you should be able to use silence and ambiguity to your advantage. You can give off an air of mystery and authority by talking less, while keeping your real plans and intentions hidden. Law 5. You must give your life to protect it. According to the law of power, reputation is very important because it is the basis of power. If you have a good reputation, you can scare people and get what you want. But if you make a mistake, people will try to attack you from all sides. It is important to protect your reputation at all times, always being on the lookout for possible attacks and stopping them before they happen. Another good strategy is to hurt your enemies' reputations so that the public will ultimately destroy them. To improve your reputation, play to your strengths and don't look helpless when you're defending against counterattacks. It can help to hang out with trustworthy people and spread rumors and doubts about competitors. The law is like a diamond and ruby mine. Once you find its wealth, you have to keep it safe at all costs because thieves are always looking for it. Don't take your good fortune for granted and keep working to make it even better because time can dull its shine. No one can get away with not building and keeping a good reputation. We live in a society where people judge everything by how it looks, so it's important to get people's attention at all costs. A good reputation is a valuable asset that can help you get what you want, make friends and stop enemies. It is one of the most important things on your path to power, so guard it like a treasure. Law 6. Do whatever it takes to get people's attention. The law of power stresses how important it is to stand out and not get forgotten or lost in the crowd. It's important to stand out, get people's attention, and look bigger, brighter, and more mysterious than the shy crowd. You create an air of mystery by making attacks that people will remember, keeping yourself fresh and staying unpredictable. Make yourself seem bigger than life. Being attacked is better than being ignored. The dance of the veils shows this law in action. What the veils show and hide makes things more interesting. This back and forth between showing and hiding is what makes mystery interesting. But you should be very careful. The attention you get should never hurt the feelings or reputation of people who are in charge of you. To use this law correctly, you need to find a balance between wanting to get attention and wanting to show respect and difference to higher-ups. By standing out, you not only get people to notice and remember you, but you also give them a sense of being unique and different. But you need to be very careful with this attention-seeking, so you don't do anything that could hurt your position or reputation. You have to show how smart you are without making those above you look bad. Law 7. Make use of other people's work. The law stresses how important it is to use other people's knowledge, wisdom and hard work for your own good. The goal is to save time and energy by using other people's work to make it look like you're quick and efficient. This way of thinking says that those who help will be forgotten, but the person who takes the credit will be remembered. As a result of the law, people shouldn't do things that other people can do, so there isn't a picture of a tired hero. It's important to look like you can do anything, so you should recognize and use the skills of others. Law says to stand on the shoulders of giants, which means to use the great things that other people have already done, and to adopt the tactics of the vulture, which means to use other people's mistakes to help yourself. It is made clear in the text that the vulture's life in the jungle is easy because it feeds on other people's work and mistakes. It's better to watch the vulture and join it than to fight it. However, the law also says that people who take credit for other people's work should be careful not to offend their bosses or come across as greedy. Being wise means knowing when and how to use this law without making things worse or causing unnecessary conflict. Law 8. Make people want to be with you. 
This law talks about the strategy of using lures to get your enemies to come to you if you have to. When you make other people do something, you take control and make them give up their plans and follow your lead. The plan is to lure them in with promises of gains while keeping them on guard and confused. The law stresses how important it is to know your opponent's weaknesses and keep your emotions in check especially when you're angry. People see aggression as a loss of power. This law is shown by the honeypot trap that is used in the bear house. The hunter uses decoys to draw the bear to him instead of actively pursuing his prey, which can be dangerous if he gets cornered. This saves energy and reduces risk. There are some exceptions to the law though. In some cases, a sudden attack may work better. When you attack quickly, your opponent has to respond right away without having time to think or prepare properly, which can cause them to make mistakes. This method shows how important it is to be tactically flexible, changing your strategy based on the situation to stay ahead. Law 9. Do things, not argue, to win. The law stresses how important it is to persuade others through actions, not words. While arguing about wins may seem like a win on the surface, it actually results in stronger and more enduring resentments and conflicting desires. Instead of arguing, it's better to get people to agree with you by showing them what you want to happen without using words. Law says that people get angry when they have to agree to something, but really don't agree with it. There is also a chance of offending people by using words in the wrong way. The law is like a seesaw. People who argue are always moving, but they never get anywhere. Getting off the seesaw and showing intentions through actions lets other people understand your ideas without any pressure, as if gravity were pulling them toward understanding on its own. There are some exceptions to the rule, though. When you are in a position of power, it can be necessary to argue verbally, mostly to distract, hide your intentions, or when you are caught lying. When these things happen, arguing with conviction can help. To be successful, you need to know when to use verbal arguments as a strategy, how to balance showing and explaining, and when to use silent actions to persuade and influence. Law 10. Stay away from people who are sick or hurt. The law says to stay away from people who are bad luck or unhappy because their bad mood can spread and hurt your own health and luck. Negative emotions can spread just as easily as diseases, and trying to help people who are always having bad fortune can end badly for oneself. According to the law, some people's unhappiness is often self-inflicted, and they may unintentionally cause other people's unhappiness. You should hang out with positive, upbeat people because they tend to bring you luck and happiness. To spot a polluter, look for signs like a troubled past, broken relationships, or a job that isn't stable. If you meet someone like this, don't argue or try to help them, because that could be a way for them to get you involved in their bad mood. Do not tell your friends about these kinds of people so that the disease doesn't spread. The law says that this kind of negativity is like a silent virus that sneaks in and spreads slowly. It is hard to stop the effects of contagion once they start. Because of this, hanging out with people who spread misery is pointless. Being around wealthy and lucky people makes you more likely to get power and luck. It is important for your success and health to stay away from people who are bad for you and to surround yourself with good fortune and positivity. Law 11 says to make yourself necessary this law stresses how important it is to become important in other people's lives in order to stay independent. Being so important and wanted that people depend on you for their happiness and success is the main idea. You have more freedom when they depend on you. The law says that you shouldn't teach others everything you know so that they can do things on their own without your help. It is a good idea to get skills or talents that are hard to replace. You gain power and safety by making people depend on you. A vine with thorns is a metaphor for the law. 
Its roots grow deep and wrap tightly around it, making it hard to pull out. The vine is a metaphor for how becoming indispensable can be a good way to keep your position, but the law also says that getting rid of those above in order to be completely independent can cost a lot. This can make people feel alone and angry, and having complete independence may not last long. According to the law, depending on each other may be a better and more long-lasting strategy in the long run. Law 12. To disarm, be selectively honest and kind. Interestingly, the law shows that selective honesty and kindness can help even the most suspicious people let down their guard. By being honest and generous with oneself at first, one can disarm others and then manipulate them as needed. To build a trustworthy reputation, it's important to be honest first, then move forward with hidden plans. Using this strategy is like the Trojan horse. The horse looked like a gift, but it actually had soldiers inside. In the same way, acting honest and kind can hide bad intentions. A thoughtful gift or act of sincerity at the right time can act as a Trojan horse, helping you sneak up on and better influence your opponent. The law does make some exceptions though. For example, if someone has a history of lying and manipulation, gifts and acts of honesty may not be enough to win their trust. In these situations, the person will always be seen with suspicion, even if they act in a way that seems honest. The law says that being honest and kind can be very effective if used strategically. However, these strategies must be used carefully and in a way that fits the situation and the person's reputation. Law 13. If you need help, use selfishness as an excuse. The law says that when you need help, it works better to appeal to people's selfishness than to their kindness or gratitude. When someone needs help or wants to make a promise, it doesn't help to remind them of past favors or depend on their compassion. Instead, you should focus on how the request or alliance can help the other person, even if that means exaggerating the benefits to get them excited. Law says that remembering the past or focusing on one's own wants may not help because people often mix up their own needs with those of others. The best thing to do is to make sure that the request is in line with what is best for the other person. The law is shown by the strong, long-lasting and reliable rope of selfishness, while the weak rope of gratitude and mercy represents the rest of the world. Selfishness is like a strong rope that doesn't break easily. It's a good way to keep relationships that are beneficial over time. However, the law does allow for exceptions some people are not acting out of self-interest, but because they want to show how good and moral they are. These people might like to show mercy, charity, and justice as ways to feel better about themselves than other people. In these situations, the appeal may be changed to fit their desire to show how morally superior and good they are. Law 14 says to be a friend, but also a spy. The law says that you should learn as much as you can about your competitors and use espionage to get useful information. This includes being a spy in social situations and everyday life, either through other people or directly. The key is to learn how to probe and ask questions in a way that makes people reveal their weaknesses and intentions without them even realizing it. People see every social interaction as a chance to spy on others in a sneaky way. Positioning yourself as a friend while getting information and secrets is part of the plan. It's important to be able to hold back your own thoughts and let other people talk about themselves. Setting up social events or making people angry are both good ways to get confessions or information. Law is shown by the spy's third eye which stands for the power to see beyond what is obvious and know everything. Having this third eye is very helpful because it lets you see more and understand other people's motives and weaknesses better. Of course, there are some exceptions to this rule. Giving false information is one of the best ways to get information. 
by giving people wrong information, you can create a distraction or false information that can be used to your advantage. This method can be especially helpful when there is a lot of competition or when enemies can make bad decisions because they don't have all the facts. Law 15. Crush the enemy to pieces. The law makes it clear that a dangerous enemy must be wiped out completely. Even a small threat can come back and become a significant adversity, as great historical leaders understood. Giving in or hesitating can be worse than destroying everything. The enemy that is still alive may get revenge, get better, and become an even bigger threat in the future. The law stresses how important it is to destroy the enemy, not only physically but also spiritually, so they can't get better or get revenge. Any desire to feel sorry for someone or make peace can cause vacillation, which is bad. An example of this law is a viper that is only half dead but can still bite and inject poison even if it is crushed. An enemy that has been hurt but isn't totally destroyed can get stronger and become more dangerous. The law does allow one exception though. If you have full control over the enemy, it may be better for your strategy to let it destroy itself rather than attacking it directly. In some situations, this method might work better than direct combat because it lets the enemy destroy itself, which can be good or bad. When this happens, strategic inaction lets the enemy fail or make mistakes on its own, so there is no need for direct action. Law 16. Being absent will make people respect and fear you more. There is evidence in the law that being absent can make people respect and value you more. Overexposure, whether it's in the real world or through constant communication, can make you seem less valuable by making you seem more common and less interesting. Overfamiliarity can happen when someone is seen or heard a lot, which takes away from the mystery and interest. After establishing yourself in a group or situation, the law says you should temporarily pull away. People will miss you and long for your return because your absence makes things seem scarce and valuable. People may respect and admire you more if you strategically distance yourself from them because it makes them afraid they might lose you forever. It's kind of like being resurrected when you come back. It makes people feel better and it gives you more courage. People compare the law to the sun, saying that we only miss it when it's not there, just like how we miss the sun when it's raining and get tired of it when it's too hot. It is very important to know when to turn off and when to return. The law does warn, though, that this only works if you already have a certain amount of power or influence. Once you have established your presence and value, you will need to strategically pull back. People who haven't yet built a significant position or reputation don't benefit from being absent. So, understanding your own situation and the right time to leave and come back is important for applying this law. Law 17. Make other people feel uncertain. The law says that people should create environments where things are hard to predict so that others are always uncertain. People like things to be predictable and look for patterns in the way other people act, which makes them feel in charge. However, if you are unpredictable and act in strange or inconsistent ways, you can scare or even bother the people around you. People get tired of trying to figure out and predict your moves because you act in unpredictable ways. If you use this strategy too much, it can be a way to control and exert power over others by making them defensive and unsure of your intentions and actions. The law says that people should break out of their routines and stop doing things the same way they always do them. By doing this, you separate yourself from the people around you and stay in charge. Attacks or actions that come out of the blue can make things even worse and keep people on high alert all the time. The image used to show this law is a cyclone that can't be predicted because its speed and direction change quickly, causing chaos and fear. It is hard to predict and defend against a cyclone, which is similar to how strategic unpredictability works. 
but the law also warns about the dangers of being unpredictable if it is used too much or in the wrong way, especially in lower level jobs. It could hurt you. When you use unpredictable, you should be careful and think about the situation and your position. It should be balanced with times when things go as planned so that it doesn't lead to too much distrust or hostility. Law 18. Don't use isolation as a way to keep yourself safe. The law says that people shouldn't build fortresses to protect themselves because being alone is dangerous. Fortresses may look safe, but they may actually put you at greater risk than they are meant to protect you from. Isolation makes it hard to get important information, makes you an easy target, and can change your sense of what is real and what is fair. According to the law, it is safer and smarter to move around, make friends, and blend in with the crowd. Being around other people protects you from danger and keeps you up to date on what's going on around you. Isolation can lead to losing touch with sources of power, having a skewed view of reality, and being cut off from information that is necessary for survival and success. A fortress on top of a hill is used as a metaphor for this law. Even though it might look impossible to get through, the fortress becomes a sign of authority and power, which makes people dislike it and angry. It is also easy to attack and take over because it is isolated and can't get to important information. There is one exception to the law though. Being alone can be helpful sometimes, like when you need time to think, see things from a different angle and stay away from distractions. To get clear and plan what to do next, it can help to temporarily remove yourself from the chaos and demands of the outside world. Law 19. Know who you're talking to and don't upset the wrong person. The law stresses how important it is to know who you are talking to so you don't hurt their feelings or mislead them. There are many kinds of people in the world and each has their own reactions and needs. It is a mistake to think that everyone will react the same way to what you do. This can cause long-lasting conflict and revenge. It is very important to know about people's traits and weaknesses before picking targets or enemies. The law talks about different personality types, like the cocky and proud person, the insecure and suspicious person, and the snake with a long memory. For each of these, you need to take a different approach. To show this law, think of a hunter. Just like a hunter doesn't use the same trap for different prey, you need to change how you deal with different people. The hunter knows a lot about his prey, like where it hides and how it likes to behave. This careful, individualized approach is necessary for getting along with other people. There are no exceptions to the law's application, which shows how important it is to understand people before you talk to them. Knowing how different people are and acting on that knowledge is always helpful, whether you want to avoid conflict, make new friends, or reach your goals. Learning about other people is a powerful skill that can help you get along with others in the complicated world of relationships. Law 20. Stay free and independent. The law warns people not to commit quickly or without thinking about it to parties, causes or groups. The wisdom in this situation and to stay independent and not permanently align yourself with a cause other than your own. Being free lets you control other people because you can set them up against each other without being tied to a specific alliance. The law says that you should seem interested in and even supportive of other people's problems and causes, but it is important to keep your own energy and sanity by keeping an emotional distance. Being separate from something lets you keep your choices and options open. A forest of bushes is used as a metaphor for this law. Bushes that get tangled up with others get stuck, which limits their growth and movement. Bushes that stay separate can, on the other hand, grow and rise above the others. This picture shows how important it is to keep a strategic distance and avoid making deals that can limit your freedom and growth. At the same time, 
the law acknowledges that sometimes it may be better to temporarily give in to one side, especially if it serves a larger strategic purpose or shows alliance, strength and loyalty. But this promise must be carefully thought out and ideally only kept up on paper so that the freedom and power it gives aren't lost. Law 21. The skill of making yourself look less guilty than you really are. Playing the fool to catch the naive is what the law says you can do. People will think you are smarter or more mature than you really are if you act less smart or more innocent than you really are. Making other people think they are smarter than you is the trick because no one likes to feel less smart than others. This makes them feel safe and important, which makes it less likely that they will be suspicious of your true intentions. In order to look less smart, you should never insult other people's intelligence. Let people know that you think they are smarter than you. People will be less suspicious of you if they think you are harmless and not very smart. This will allow you to act without being noticed. The skunk that was pretending to be dead is a good example of this law. Skunks are often left alone by predators because they act like they aren't dangerous. The skunk is actually just avoiding danger with this camouflage strategy, which gives the impression that it is weak. But the law warns people to be careful. When you first get power, you shouldn't act like a fool in front of people who can't help you. In some situations, you may need to show that you are smarter than the competition in a sneaky way. Finding the right balance between making yourself look less capable to some people and showing others that you are capable is important for staying ahead and reaching your goals. Law 22. Turn giving up into having power. Particularly when you find yourself in a position of weakness, the law suggests surrender as a power strategy. Instead of fighting when you're down because it's the right thing to do, Surrendering gives you time to heal, annoy, and hurt the conqueror until he loses his strength. This law says that if you give up, you deny your enemy the pleasure of fighting and beating you. Surrender can be used to make your opponent angry and off balance, turning it into a tool of subtle power. When you are weak or by yourself, giving up is smarter than fighting because fighting only makes you a martyr and doesn't help you in any way. An oak tree fighting the blizzard is used as a metaphor for this law. An oak tree that faces strong winds loses its branches one by one and eventually breaks in half. The oak that bends in the wind, on the other hand, lives longer because its trunk gets stronger and its roots get deeper. This picture shows that being flexible and giving up can be stronger than being stubborn when facing stronger forces. There are no exceptions to this strategy if you correctly understand the terms of surrender and value your life and future, as the law makes clear. When used strategically, surrendering can be a powerful way to stay alive and eventually win. It gives you time to heal and get stronger so you can face future challenges from a better position. Law 23. Put all of your forces together. The law stresses how important it is to focus your efforts and forces on the strongest point. This means putting most of your efforts into one area where you can make the biggest difference instead of spreading them out in many different directions. It is likened to a mine. It is more useful to find a rich mine and dig deep into it than to jump from one shallow mine to another. Subtlety is never more important than depth. The law says that when you're looking for power sources, you should find a key pattern or main source of support that can keep giving you resources. Have a clear sense of purpose and give your whole self to it. Focus is very important. Focusing and being determined against enemies who aren't as focused can be a good strategy. The arrow is a metaphor for the law because you can't hit two targets with the same arrow this shows how important it is to concentrate and focus on one thing at a time. The mind and the arrow must be one. You can only hit your target accurately if you concentrate very hard both mentally and physically. 
The law does, however, acknowledge that when protection is needed, it may be best to work with more than one power source or have more than one ally. This means that while concentrating forces is important for many situations, having a wide range of allies and support may be more important when safety and security are top priorities. As a result, it is important to look at each situation on its own and choose whether to concentrate forces or spread out support based on the facts. Law 24. Learn how to be a great courtier. In a world based on power, the law shows how important it is to learn how to simulate things and play politics in a subtle way. To be a great courtier, you need to know how to please without going overboard and how to follow orders while still standing out. The ideal courtier knows how to control people so that leaders like kings and queens feel noble and others are afraid of their power. These court masters are nice and polite but their anger is hidden and hard to spot. They know how to use words well and know how to make a compliment or an insult mean more. The perfect courtier knows how to use situations to their advantage and control people and situations to get what they want. The figure of the puppet master who holds the strings and controls the actions of the puppets to get people's attention stands for the law. The puppet master is a metaphor for the ideal courtier he or she controls the game of illusions and gets people to say and do what the master wants while still keeping up an air of politeness and respect. It is required by this law that you must always be the perfect courtier in places where power and politics are very important. To be successful and stay alive, you must master this art. To play the tricky game of influence and power well, you need to be a perfect courtier. This way, you can manipulate circumstances to your advantage without letting on what your real plans or intentions are. Law 25. Don't fit into traditional roles. Make your own identity. The law stresses how important it is to reject the roles that society gives you and make a new identity that stands out. It's important to be in charge of your own image instead of letting other people define you. This means using dramatic make-believe in your public actions and gestures to make your character stronger and bigger than life. The law says that you should learn theatre and know who your audience is. Putting yourself in the spotlight, getting people's attention and not being easily upset are all important parts of this plan. The goal is to make yourself memorable and captivating so that others can see and respond to you. The figure of the Greek god of the sea, who could change shape at will, stands for this law. He changed into a lion, a snake, a panther, a boar, running water, and finally a leafy tree as needed to adapt to the circumstances. One of the most important parts of this law is the ability to adapt and change based on the situation. There are no exceptions to the rule that you have to create and play your roles with skill and mastery. Being able to shape your identity and image in a way that stands out and makes an impact is very important in life. The law supports rejecting imposed roles and identities and creating a unique persona that grabs and keeps people's attention. This gives you more control over your image and influence Law 26 says to wash your hands. The law stresses how important it is to keep up a public image of politeness and efficiency and to avoid making mistakes and doing bad things. It is important to always look your best, even if you are doing something questionable. In order to do this, the law says you should use scapegoats to hide your mistakes and involvement. To keep your reputation and image, Having someone else take the blame for mistakes or failures is a good idea. Hiring people to do your dirty work for you means you never have to get your hands dirty directly. This plan keeps you from taking responsibility or facing bad consequences. People use the cat's paw as an example of this law because it can both grab things with its sharp claws and be soft and cushioned at the same time. Cats use their paws for many things like playing with their prey or pulling things out of the fire. 
This picture shows the skill of handling tricky or potentially dangerous situations in a subtle and effective way. But the law also says that when you are safe and powerful, it is sometimes better to be kind and forgive those who are weaker by nature. Sometimes admitting your own mistakes can help people feel sorry for you and keep your image of being more human and approachable. Taking a balanced approach can help you keep other people's sympathy and support while also protecting your reputation and staying out of trouble and failure. Law 27. Gather followers into a cult. Look into the need to believe. The law says that people naturally want to believe in something. If you offer a new cause or faith, you can become the center of that desire. You can get a group of followers together. The key is to use persuasive language and promises with a lot of energy, putting emotion over logic and clear thinking. Set up rituals and ask your followers to make sacrifices to make them more devoted. If there aren't any organized religions or big causes around, your beliefs can be a strong force for change. Keep your messages simple and vague and focus on what people can see and feel instead of what they can understand. Take a lesson from organized religions on how to set up your group, hide your income, and use the us vs them dynamic to bring your followers even closer together. The law is represented by the magnet, which is an invisible force that pulls things together and makes them magnetic, which makes other things magnetic and so on. You should be like a magnet, drawing people to you and keeping them together. Nothing outside of you will be able to pull people away once they're around you. Of course, the law warns you that your miracle potions might not work after all. In this case, it might be smarter to deal with people one-on-one -on -one instead of as a group. This shows that building a cult of followers can be powerful, but it takes skill and care to keep the illusion going and avoid being caught. It's a tricky game of manipulation and persuasion that needs a careful balance between getting people to be loyal and keeping them from being skeptical. Law 28. Why audacity is important. The law stresses how important it is to be brave in what you do. People who aren't sure what to do can make others hesitant and weak, and people who are afraid are seen as dangerous. It is better to be brave because mistakes made when being brave can be fixed by being even braver. People admire bravery more than they admire timidity. The law says that being brave is important because a brave lie works better than a shy one. Being brave makes you stand out and earns you respect and admiration. A lion is used as a metaphor because it is a strong and brave animal. The things it does are quick and strong and it doesn't hesitate. But the hare, which stands for timidity, tries to run away from danger but often trips and gets stuck. The difference between the lion and the hare shows this law of power. The lion, with its quick movements and strong jaws, stands for bravery and boldness. The hare, on the other hand, represents fear and doubt because it tends to run away and get caught. On the other hand, the law also says that acting timidly can be helpful in some situations. You can use this fake fear to watch and learn about your opponents, which will help you plan a better attack later. This means that being brave is usually a good thing, but strategy and judgment should be adjusted to the situation at hand, and shyness can be used as a strategy when it will help reach long-term goals. Law 29. Make a plan for the whole thing. The law stresses how important it is to carefully plan everything out until the very end, thinking about all the outcomes, problems and setbacks that could ruin your plans. You can avoid being surprised and know when to stop if you plan all the way to the end. This method also lets you be ready for anything that might happen and change your plans as needed. By making plans ahead of time, the law says you can better control what happens and stay one step ahead of other people. The ancient Greeks thought that only the gods could see into the future, while people were stuck in the present and could only feel what was happening at that very moment. So, getting closer to this big picture of the gods 
is the best thing to do. The gods on Olympus represent this law of power. They watch people from above and can see what will happen with every action they make. They find it funny that people can't see past the present moment and fall into tragedies and illusions. Laws like this one say that you have to think ahead and plan all the way to the end. You can avoid common mistakes and manipulate situations to your advantage if you do this. Careful planning lets you see problems coming and come up with ways to solve them, which increases your chances of success and reduces the number of unpleasant surprises. This long-term strategic approach is important for anyone who wants to have power and influence for a long time. Law 30. Act in a way that seems natural and easy. The law says that what you do should look normal and not hard to understand. All of the skill, work and tricks that go into doing them must be carefully hidden. When you do something, it should look like it was easy for you, like you could do a lot more without showing that it took a lot of work. The law makes it very clear that you should not talk about how hard you worked to get what you want. Making an effort can make people doubt your skills and lessen the effect of what you do. Also, don't let anyone see your tricks because they could be used against you. Work on it behind closed doors to get better at making hard things look easy. The racehorse stands for this law. Up close we can see how hard and tense it is to control the horse because its breathing is hard and hurts. If you look at the horse from a distance, it only seems elegant and light, like it can glide through the air with ease. Keeping people at a distance like this shows them how easy your movements look without knowing how hard you work to make them happen. But the law also says you shouldn't hide your efforts too much. It's important to make things look easy, but if you hide your plans and actions too much, you might come across as paranoid or fake. So, it's important to find a balance between seeming relaxed and being open enough that no one will suspect or distrust you. The skill of looking natural and easygoing requires a careful mix of practice, hiding, and being yourself. Law 31. Choose what to do. The law is mostly about controlling the choices other people see, giving them the impression that they have freedom of choice. You want to give them choices that will lead to good results for you, no matter which one they make. You do this by making people pick the lesser of two evils, both of which serve your purpose. The point is to put people in a situation where they can't see any other way out than the options you give them. People will think they are playing a fair game and having freedom when, in reality, they are just following the path you set out for them by leaving out all the other letters and leaving only A and B as options. The law is shown by the horns of the bull. In the same way that a bull's horns trap its prey, leaving them with no way to get away, you must keep your victims stuck between the choices you give them. People will end up following the path you planned, whether they choose to go left or right. But the law also says that there are times when it might be better to give opponents more choices instead of forcing them to choose only one. This can help with distracting or sneaky plans, where letting people have more freedom can lead to better long-term results. This means that while controlling options is a strong tool, it should be used wisely and in a way that fits the situation. Law 32. Make people's dreams come true. The law is mostly about waking people up in their dreams. People often avoid the truth because it's unpleasant and ugly, so appealing to the romantic and fantastic can be very effective. People who can create illusions or bring up fantasies are highly valued because life is often hard and upsetting. Getting people to use their imaginations can give you a lot of power. Distance is important for keeping fantasy alive. Don't get too familiar or easy to reach. As long as the fantasy is an illusion and out of reach, people will continue to be interested and admire it. To keep the fantasy's charm, be vague and indirect when you talk about it. The law is like the moon. It's always out of reach, changes shape, goes away, and comes back. The moon is a symbol of mystery and wonder, 
because it never gets boring and always makes us dream and want more. To promise the moon is to promise something that can't be reached, which sparks imagination and desire. But the law warns about the dangers of fantasy. It's usually just for fun, and many people know they're being tricked, but choose to keep the illusion alive because they enjoy the entertainment and short break from reality. It's important to see and respect that duality, which gives us both the fantasy and the knowledge that the illusion is just a way to escape and have fun. You can temporarily escape reality by giving people fantasy, but you have to be careful and skilled to keep the balance between fantasy and reality. Law 33. Find out what other people are weak at and look into it. The law stresses how important it is to find people's weaknesses and take advantage of them. There is a weakness in everyone. It could be an insecurity, a strong emotion, an uncontrollable need, or even a small hidden pleasure. These flaws are like holes in a castle wall that can be used as strategic targets once they are found. To find these weaknesses, you need to pay attention to unconscious signals and gestures and look for signs of weakness. To do this, you need to find the helpless child inside your victim and look for personality contrasts to find the weakest link. This law is shown by an enemy's neuralgic point. Everyone has secrets and thoughts that they can't control coming out. You can put pressure and influence on someone by finding their weak spot, whether it's in their mind, heart, or somewhere else. You can use the weak spot to your advantage once you've found it. But the law also says that people who take advantage of these weaknesses should be careful because it's easy to cross the line and do damage that can't be fixed. Finding and taking advantage of weaknesses can be very effective, but it's important to be careful and sensitive when doing so. As long as you don't go too far and cause problems that weren't meant to happen, the goal is to control and manipulate, not destroy. Law 34 says to act like a nobleman. The law says that if you want to be treated like a king, you have to act like one. The respect and kindness you get from other people usually depend on how you act. People won't respect you if you act rude or ordinary. On the other hand, if you treat yourself with respect and walk like a king or queen, others will do the same. Believe in your abilities and show that you were meant to wear a crown. The crown stands for the wall that separates you from other people. It is up to you to make this wall real. This means acting different from the people around you to show that you are not one of them. But it is very important not to mix up royal respect for others with pride. The crown is a symbol of the law. When you put it on your head, you should feel calm and confident. Do not show doubt and do not lose your honor. If the crown does not fit you well, it will look like it was meant for someone else. Always keep in mind that the great emperors crowned themselves, but it's important to be careful with royal posturing because it can sometimes do more harm than good. It's good to be different, but never make someone feel bad in order to do so. This can lead to a very bad reaction. Adopting an aristocratic attitude can help you gain authority and respect, but you should do it in a balanced and sensitive way, never putting others down or disrespecting them. Law 35. Learn how to know when it's the right time. The law stresses that you should never be in a hurry because being in a hurry shows that you are desperate and out of control. Instead, you should be patient and act like you know everything will work out in the end. It's very important to learn how to spot the right moment. Get good at picking up on the mood and trends that will lead you to power. This law advises acting quickly when the opportunity presents itself and waiting when the time is not yet right. Keep your cool and a low profile while you slowly build the support you need to rise to power. The hawk, which stands for patience and accuracy, is a symbol of the law. The hawk flies around in the sky quietly, keeping a close eye on everything. Its prey below doesn't know it's being watched, and when the time is right, the hawk strikes quickly, with no way to defend itself. 
This picture shows how important it is to watch in silence and act quickly and without planning to. This law can't be broken. Ignoring how important timing is and blindly following the crowd won't help you in any way. Knowing when to act is one of the most important skills that sets real strategists apart from people who just act without thinking about the situation. It is important to understand and respect timing and its subtleties if you want to gain and keep power. Law 36. Hate what you can't have. The law says to hate what you can't have because ignoring someone is the best way to get back at them. When you notice and pay attention to a problem or enemy, you give it life and credibility. This means that the more attention you give an enemy, the stronger it becomes. In the same way, if you try to fix a small mistake in a bad way, it can get bigger and stand out more. There are times when things should just stay the same. If there is something you want but can't have, the best thing to do is act like you don't care about it. By showing less interest, you will look better. When you play the contempt card, you have a lot of power because you can set the rules of the battle and go to war on your own terms. One effective strategy is to act like you don't care. The idea of a small wound is used to show this law. Any wound can hurt and irritate, and trying to heal it in the wrong way, like by complaining, scratching or picking at the scab, only makes things worse. Sometimes the best thing to do is to not worry too much about it and just let it heal on its own. But the law warns that this method needs to be used with care. It is important to learn how to tell the difference between small problems that can get worse if they are ignored and bigger problems that need to be dealt with. Because of this, contempt and indifference are strong emotions, but you need to know when to use them so that you don't make small problems worse. Law 37. Make spectacles that look good and have strong meanings. The law stresses how important it is to make shows that people want to watch and to use strong images and symbols to gain more power and influence. Big symbolic pictures and movements get people's attention and give the person who uses them a sense of power. You draw attention to yourself and take their attention away from what you're really doing by putting on shows with lots of interesting visuals and bright symbols. As this law says, you should use imagery and give visual clues that build an overall story or figure. Establishing a brand or symbol that represents your objectives is one way to make yourself stand out. For example, choosing an image or symbol from the past that aligns with your objective can be an effective strategy. The cross and the sun are used as examples of powerful symbols. The crucifixion represents total surrender, while the sun symbolizes radiation and energy. The combination of these symbols creates a new reality and a new power. The use of powerful symbols and expressive images does not need to be explicitly explained to be effective. According to this law, there is no disadvantage in creating and using images or symbols to increase your power. They serve as powerful tools to capture people's imagination, divert attention from your true actions and reinforce your image. The skillful use of symbolism and visual spectacles is an effective way to communicate complex messages simply and directly reinforcing your status and influence. Law 38. Think independently, but behave like others. The law advises you to think as you wish, but behave according to the social norms and trends of the times. If you stand out too much, exhibiting unconventional ideas or unorthodox behavior, people may interpret this as an attempt to attract attention or prove yourself superior. This can lead to resentment and eventually to punishment. For making others feel inferior, it is safer and more strategic to blend in, adopt common behavior and share prevailing trends. Reserve your true opinions and uniqueness for tolerant friends and those who will appreciate your individuality. At the same time, respect local customs and cultures 
acting as a chameleon of opinions to fit into different environments. The law is represented by the metaphor of the black sheep. The black sheep is avoided by the flock because it looks different and does not belong to the group. This leaves it vulnerable and isolated, making it an easy target for predators. Similarly, standing out too much can make you vulnerable to attack and isolation. However, the law also highlights an important exception. The only time it pays to stand out is when you have achieved an unshakable position of power. At that point, you can display your differences as a sign of distinction and superiority. But until you reach that point, it is wiser and safer to blend in and behave according to accepted norms, keeping your opinions and singularities reserved for your inner thought and inner circles. Law 39. Stir the waters to attract fish. The law suggests that while anger and strong emotions are generally not advisable in strategies, provoking such reactions in others can be beneficial as long as you remain calm and controlled. The idea is to throw the enemy off balance by exploiting their vulnerabilities, especially vanity, to take control of the situation. In doing so, you place others in a position of weakness while maintaining your own emotional balance. This tactic involves never allowing others to see you lose control, even as you work to take control away from them. By acting in this way, you create a strategic advantage by manipulating the emotions of others. The law is illustrated by the metaphor of a fish tank. When the water is calm, the fish remain invisible at the bottom, but as the water is agitated, they emerge. And with more agitation, they become visible and even aggressive, taking the bait with the bait. This symbolizes the idea that stirring up the emotions of others makes them more exposed and predictable. However, it is essential to exercise caution before stirring the emotional waters. Make sure you will not create a situation beyond your control or one that could be detrimental to you. This strategy requires a careful balance between provoking others and maintaining control of the situation. Law 40. Despise what comes for free. The law warns about the dangers of what is offered for free, usually concealing a trap or hidden obligation. Things of value should be paid for, as paying frees you from unwanted feelings of gratitude or guilt. It is wise to pay the right price and not to skimp in the pursuit of excellence. Be generous with your money, keep it in circulation, for generosity is a sign of power and attracts more power. You must show greatness and avoid stinginess, especially in relation to money. Money is one of the most visible ways to show greatness or meanness. In addition, money often buys people's submission more effectively than displays of power. This law is symbolized by the metaphor of a river. Building a dam to protect or save resources can result in stagnant, murky, unproductive water where only unwanted life forms thrive. You found a river that flows freely, generates abundance and wealth. The river must also periodically flood to fertilize and renew the land, illustrating the idea that circulation and generosity of resources are essential for growth and prosperity. Therefore, it is critical to recognize that there is no advantage in accepting what is offered for free. Often, the hidden cost outweighs any apparent benefit. The law advocates the importance of valuing and investing in things of value, maintaining a posture of generosity and greatness. Law 41. Avoid following in the footsteps of a great man. The law advises against the danger of following too closely in the footsteps of a great man or a famous predecessor. What is done first is usually perceived as more original and impressive than what comes later. If you replace someone notable or succeed a famous parent, you will need to accomplish much more to overcome their shadow and shine on your own. The law suggests avoiding getting lost in the shadow of prominent figures or getting stuck in a past that was not your creation. Instead, it is crucial to establish your own name and identity. This may involve changing direction, 
metaphorically killing the dominant parent, belittling his or her legacy and conquering power in your own light. The past can hinder a young hero's development, forcing him to follow a path already laid out and limiting his creativity and individuality. This law is represented by the figure of the father who casts a gigantic shadow over his children, keeping them trapped in the past, even after his death. To free oneself from that shadow and follow one's own path, it is necessary to symbolically kill that dominating influence. However, the law also warns about the caution needed in rejecting the past. In some situations, it may be beneficial to adopt methods or ideas from the past when they are useful. Rejecting something just out of spite may seem childish. Therefore, it is important to evaluate each situation and decide whether following in the footsteps of the past may be beneficial, balancing respect for tradition with the need for innovation and individuality. Law 42. Attack the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. The law highlights that often the root of a problem lies with a single individual, a strong leader, a troublesome subordinate, or an agitator. Allowing these individuals to continue to act can lead others to succumb to their negative influence. The strategy, therefore, is not to wait for problems to grow or to try to negotiate with these disruptive elements. They are considered irreparable and must be neutralized either through isolation or banishment by attacking the source of the problem, the sheep, i.e. the followers and influenced will disperse. The law emphasizes the importance of identifying and eliminating the cause of the problems. It is essential to know who to isolate, how to do it, and above all, why it is necessary to isolate that person. The goal is to eliminate the negative influence at the root to prevent it from spreading and causing more damage. The metaphor used to illustrate this law is that of a flock of sheep and their shepherd. Instead of wasting time and effort trying to deal with each sheep individually or confronting the guard dogs, the most effective strategy is to target the shepherd. By luring the shepherd away, the dogs will follow him and the flock will be unprotected and scattered, facilitating control over the sheep. However, the law also warns about the risk of attacking someone who has the means to take revenge. In this case, caution is needed when deciding to isolate the troublemaker, carefully assessing the situation and the possible repercussions of the actions. This strategy requires a careful balance between decisive action and consideration of the possible consequences. Law 43. Conquer Hearts and Minds. The law focuses on the importance of conquering people's hearts and minds rather than trying to coerce them, as this often ends up working against you. The key to success is to seduce people, make them want to get close and become loyal allies. This involves understanding and acting on people's individual psychologies, weaknesses, emotions and desires, tailoring your words and actions to attract and influence. Ignoring the hearts and minds of others can breed hatred and resistance. Therefore, it is crucial to attend to the people around you, assessing their particular psychologies and adapting your strategies to seduce them effectively. Understanding people's emotions and using them to your advantage is a valuable skill. This law is represented by the metaphor of the lock. People build emotional and psychological walls, but there are doors in those barriers that lead to their hearts and minds. The key to opening those doors is to understand their emotions and desires. By looking through the lock, you can find the right key, allowing access to their will without the resistance that would normally accompany a forced attempt. The law emphasizes that there are no exceptions to the need to conquer people's hearts and minds. This subtle and influential approach is essential for winning allies, influencing people, and achieving success without facing overt resistance or resentment. Winning hearts and minds is a powerful strategy that requires patience, empathy, 
and the ability to adapt to the needs and desires of others. Law 44. Disarm and confuse with the mirror effect. The law addresses the use of the mirror effect as a tactic to disorient and weaken enemies. The mirror not only reflects reality, but is also a perfect tool for creating illusions. By imitating the behaviors and actions of enemies, you leave them confused about your strategy and can ridicule and humiliate them, leading them to overreact. By placing the mirror in front of the minds of others, you create the illusion of sharing their values, seducing them. Mirroring their actions serves as a powerful lesson and few can resist the power of the mirror effect. This tactic can be used in a neutralizing way, especially against narcissists, moralists, and people prone to hallucinations. The law is represented by the shield of Perseus, polished to a mirror. Medusa, seeing her own hideous reflection, is distracted, allowing Perseus to defeat her with an accurate blow. This myth illustrates how the mirror effect can be used to deceive, ridicule and enrage the enemy leading to his downfall. However, it is important to be cautious with this strategy. There is a risk of unconsciously mirroring a past scenario of which you have no knowledge, which can lead to unexpected or undesired results. Therefore, when using the mirror effect, it is crucial to be aware of the context and possible implications of mirroring the behaviors of others. This approach requires discernment and the ability to adapt your strategy to the specific circumstances. Law 45. Accept the need for change, but in moderation. The law highlights the importance of understanding people's natural resistance to significant changes in their established habits and practices. Although change is theoretically necessary, in practice, radical alterations can be traumatic, leading to resistance and even rebellion. Therefore, when assuming a new position of power or establishing a base of influence, it is essential to demonstrate respect for existing traditions and methods. Changes, when necessary, should be introduced gradually and seen as a continuous improvement on the past, not an abrupt break with it. Understanding the consequences of change and using anticipation to your advantage are important aspects of this process. Presenting change as a natural evolution of the past helps to minimize resistance and ease the transition. The law is symbolized by the figure of the cat, an animal that values routine and familiarity. Abrupt changes may cause discomfort or even erratic behavior in the cat. Similarly, respecting established rituals and culture while introducing subtle changes can make the process easier and more acceptable. However, it is also important to recognize moments of stagnation when people may desire change. At such times, rather than resisting, it may be advantageous to channel that desire to introduce new ideas and innovations. In implementing the law, it is crucial to maintain a balance between respect for the past and the need to move forward, making changes strategically and with sensitivity. Law 46. Don't appear too perfect. The law warns about the dangers of appearing too perfect. Surpassing others is risky, but even more dangerous is to appear to have no flaws or weaknesses. Perfection breeds envy and creates silent enemies. It is shrewd to occasionally show some imperfections and admit harmless vices, as this deflects envy and makes you more human and approachable. Only the gods and the dead can appear perfect without consequences. Appearing too perfect can lead to the creation of envy and enemies. This law is represented by the metaphor of a garden with weeds. Weeds are not intentionally fed, but spread when the garden is watered. They may not be visible at first, but eventually they take over, tall and ugly, preventing the growth and flowering of the beautiful. Therefore, it is important not to water indiscriminately, destroying the weeds of envy by denying them the food that makes them grow. However, 
when you find yourself in a position of power and cannot avoid envying someone, it is advisable to be more aggressive. In these cases, showing from an and maintaining perfection can be a way to confront those who envy you. Therefore, while the law recommends avoiding the appearance of excessive perfection, it also recognizes that in certain situations of power, a different strategy for handling envy and rivalry may be necessary. Law 47. Do not exceed the established goal. The law stresses the importance of knowing when to stop, especially after achieving a victory. The moment of victory is often the most dangerous, as arrogance and overconfidence can lead to overstepping established limits. By going beyond what is necessary, you can create more enemies than you defeat and attract unnecessary problems. It is critical not to let success go to your head. Nothing replaces the importance of strategy and careful planning. Set your goal and, when you reach it, know how to stop. Control and restraint in the moment of triumph are crucial to sustaining your achievements and avoiding future losses. This law is illustrated by the story of Icarus, who, flying on wax wings made by his father, Daedalus, climbed too high, defying warnings to maintain a safe altitude. Exhilarated with freedom and the triumph of flight, Icarus climbed so high that the sun melted the wax on his wings, leading him to fall and die. This story symbolizes the danger of ignoring limits and the risk of unbridled success. However, it is also important not to stop prematurely at the moment of victory. Make sure that all objectives have been achieved and that the victory is complete to avoid leaving unvanquished enemies or incomplete tasks that can be turned against you in the future. The law teaches the balance between achieving success and knowing when to stop to consolidate gains and avoid setbacks. Law 48 avoid having a definite form. The law stresses the importance of avoiding a definite form or plan that can make you vulnerable to attack. Instead, it is safer to be malleable and constantly in motion, just like water. Accepting uncertainty and understanding that no law is absolutely fixed are fundamental to your protection. Adaptability and fluidity are the best defenses against the uncertainties of life and the maneuvers of enemies. The law advises against relying on stability or permanent order, as everything is constantly changing. Being like the 1,000-faced hero or a social chameleon is an effective way to protect yourself and move forward. This involves continually adapting to situations, assuming different forms and identities as needed. This law is symbolized by Mercury, the winged messenger, god of commerce and patron of thieves, gamblers and those who rely on speed and deception. Mercury was known for his ability to move quickly and change shape, embodying adaptability and the ability to change as needed. However, it is important to be wary of constant formlessness, as this can lead to your enemies pursuing you, dispersing both their own mental and physical strengths. The ability to be flexible and adaptable while maintaining a sense of direction and purpose is key to using this law effectively. If you've made it this far, congratulations on your dedication to exploring the intriguing universe of the 48 Laws of Power. Comment below and share your thoughts on this manipulation manual, demonstrating that you have absorbed the ideas presented. I sincerely appreciate you spending your time this far your participation strengthens the community and drives the production of more relevant content. See you soon, and may you weasley apply the lessons learned. Have a great day.